Welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you've been around for a while. My name is Molly. I am a first year fourth grade teacher and sub getting my teaching certification. And today I'm starting a new series, which I'm really excited about, which is my new teacher toolkit. And this is all the things that I searched, researched, wanted information on, didn't know how to do, was nervous about, etc. when I started teaching and I thought I would share this information with you. Um, it's getting to be that time of year where um, May graduates are starting to look for teaching jobs and interview and do all those things. So I thought I would just make a little mini series about things that were really helpful for me when I got started and hopefully they can be useful for you as well. Before we get too far into this, um, it would mean the world if you subscribed, give this a big thumbs up and hit the bell for notifications. Now let's dive into it. Today, I wanna to talk about what I wish I knew when I started teaching. So I have 10 things that I have written down that I think are 10 essentials that would be helpful when you are getting started. The first thing I wish I knew was it is so easy to get distracted and try and like talk and goof off and watch TikToks or whatever during your plan period, but your plan period should become almost sacrosanct. Close the door, make a to-do list and get your work done. It is a saving grace for me in staying ahead of the game, feeling like I'm on top of my students and my um, like requirements and everything. Plus, it means I don't have to take work home. And so I use any spare minute I can get. I use my lunch periods and my plans. They are just the most useful times. Um, I do occasionally not get a plan if I'm covering a class and, you know, it's an imperfect system, but use your plans. They are going to save your life. Number two, ask. Ask every question. Ask for help. Ask what you can do. I have had a million questions and I have asked every teacher that I've come into contact with. I've asked admin. Anyone that I can get advice and experience and notes from, I ask. Um, when I was starting my reading small groups, I went to our principal and I asked if she had any books she recommended and she actually lent me four amazing books that have helped me build my small groups to a place I'm really proud of. Um, I ask my mentor teacher a million questions a day. Anyone and everyone, ask, 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 and ask for help. If you're struggling or stuck or need something, ask for help. I have been so delighted and overwhelmed with how gracious and generous everyone is at my school. Ask for help. Number three, and this I definitely learned the hard way, use your curriculum even if the worksheets aren't super cute. I was pretty notorious for only using TPT for my you do's, but the curriculum is already there. You don't have to print and make copies. It works, I would say, like 80% of the time. Obviously, like there are going to be lessons where you are feeling really passionate and creative and you use a resource that you've made or that you got from another teacher, but use the curriculum. Use it, use it, use it, even if it's imperfect. Even if you have to make a couple modifications to instructions or to a worksheet, use the curriculum. It's going to save you a lot of headache and a lot of copies. Number four, systems, 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 and routines. I was not there at the beginning of the school year, and so I did not get to implement systems, routines, and expectations. I just jumped in a couple weeks late because of my program. And I was super nervous to just kind of like lay down, like, these are my expectations. This is what it's going to look like to be in my class, all these things. And it really bit me in the butt. I wound up having to do a whole classroom reset where I spent the entire day going over systems, routines, and expectations. And 
Had I just done that from the get-go, I would have saved myself a lot of stress and a lot of heartache. So think really intentionally when you're setting up your classroom, when you're planning for your first couple days, what systems and what routines are gonna work for you and work for the type and style teacher you are. If you want to learn more about the systems and routines that I use as a teacher, drop a comment below and I'm happy to uh, share those with you guys. Um, number five. Your morning routine before you get to school can help you all day long. My morning routine is cultivated and curated for everything I need before I go into my day. I start off the day with a workout so that I can like focus on me and my health, my mental health, so that I can get up and feel like I'm not chasing the day, like the day already took off. I get up pretty early and work out and I feel really centered and set. I eat a good breakfast. I don't live on iced coffee, even though that is my default setting. I do force myself to eat a good breakfast and that's whatever that looks like for you. Um, and then I get into school early. I am not an afternoon worker. I get in before my contract hours and I leave right when contract hours end. So, I, by the time my students get into the classroom, I have been there for like over an hour. I've gotten all my copies, I've set up and cleaned my classroom, my slides are up, I've gone through things, I've made any anchor charts I need. And I know that before I even got to school, I was pouring into my mental health, my physical health, my own personal self care and well being, and it sets me up for a really great day. So spend some time mapping out what an ideal morning routine looks like for you and i promise it's going to blow your mind how amazing your days are number six make easy lunches i'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about this but i don't know many teachers that get like time to sit down and eat at least that doesn't exist in my world so make easy lunches um some classrooms have a microwave some don't some staff rooms do some don't just just make easy lunches save yourself a hassle. Number seven, you do not have to spend a billion dollars to have a cute functional classroom. Facebook marketplace, um, Goodwill, thrift stores, estate sales, other teachers, resources within your community. There are tons of ways to save money on your classroom. You don't have to go broke to feel like you're a good teacher. That's your gremlins talking to you. That's not real life. Number eight, it is okay to show a sh like a show or a movie. You're fine. It's okay. It's going to be fine. If everything goes to hell in a handbasket, take, you know, a half an hour magic school bus and get your life together. Or if you need a reset, if you're really emotionally activated, take the time. Take the time. You're going to be okay. Everybody has a bad day. You're not going to ruin these students' lives by giving them a break and a moment for you to catch your breath and for them to catch your breath. And it will probably end up being a better emotional, social emotional environment for them if you are calm and have figured out what you need to figure out. Magic School Bus isn't going to kill them. Watching Encanto is not going to kill them. It's all okay. Number nine is find a tribe. I follow some really amazing teacher influencers who um, give me support and encouragement when I'm feeling down. I have amazing team teachers at my school. I have friends and family who are really and truly the best to lend an ear. It's a job like anything else. So there are going to be days where it's really hard and having a tribe that builds you up and pours into you and makes you feel really good is essential. Um, and if you don't have someone like that, now you do. I'm part of your tribe. I'm here for whatever you need. Reach out and I am happy to give you support or resources or anything you need. You are not alone doing this and you're doing a really good job. And lastly, read. Read, 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 read everything, articles, books, anything you can get your hands on for the issues that you're facing in your classroom. There are tons of YouTube videos. It's not really reading, but it's learning. Books, online articles, master classes, per, uh, professional development, everything and anything 
for the challenges that you are facing in your classroom, you are not supposed to have all the answers. Read the books. And if you're working in a school that's an environment that you've never experienced, read up on those environments. Read up on the lives of your students. You know, ask them what their favorite books are. Ask them, you know, if their parents have any recommendations for books that are like influential in their lives, ask your principal and admin and instructional coaches what they would recommend for you to teach to, um, you know, enhance your capabilities as a teacher. Read constantly. I'm forever getting new and great and better ideas from the books that I'm reading. Okay, that was fast, but I want these to be quick and easy so that you can watch them when you're feeling nervous or just need a boost or need some tips and tricks. And those are the 10 things I wish I knew before I started teaching. Thanks for coming along and I'll see you next time.